Well, Dr. Johnny Ray Youngblood, uh, uh, one of the noted theologians uh, and workers from Brooklyn, uh, New York, one day he was building a new church out there, uh, and somebody asked him, why are you building this wonderful sanctuary in such a depressed community? Why are you building this sanctuary in such a crime-ridden community? Uh, well, Dr. Youngblood responded this way. This is why we should have resurrection faith. He said, because resurrection works best in graveyards. Some of y'all didn't get it. Some of y'all will get it when you go home. Uh, would you tell somebody resurrection works best? In graveyards. Resurrection works best in dry and broken places. You've got to understand, my sisters and my brothers, that God works best in places where hope is gone. Mm, my, 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 my. Those of you that are in despair this morning, you've got to understand that God works best in the middle of despair. He works best where despair has set in and trouble is on every hand. God works best in the middle of your pain. He, he works best in dead places and painful places and troubled places. You see, resurrection faith looks forward to a revelation of Jesus in a painful predicament where it seems like death has had the last word. But I'm here to tell you today that it ain't over until God says it's over. Would you preach to your neighbor and say, neighbor, mm, neighbor, it ain't over until God says it's over. Bless his name. Uh, and so the story doesn't conclude until we get down to verse 25. For it's there uh, that the words of Jesus come true. Uh, where he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe on me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. Uh, you see, resurrection faith is not denied or defeated by death. Uh, bless his name. Uh, and so Jesus goes to the graveside of Lazarus, pulls out an eraser. Lord have mercy. Uh, and what death said is over. Where death said is finished. Where death said it stops right here. Where death said it's ended. Where death said it's done. Jesus erased the period. And in the spirit, he put a comma. And what does the comma do? The comma allows for a pause. Would you look at somebody and say, just pause. I know you're going through right now, but just pause. I know it looks bleak, but hold up. Wait a minute. I know you don't know where to go or who to turn to, but just pause. Bless your name. God is always putting a pause in the situation of his people. I saw the children of Israel come to the Red Sea and start to scream and yell and cuss Moses out because they thought that he had brought them to die. But Moses said, pause. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Is there anybody in here that can testify 
that somewhere along your journey, God put a comma in there and said, Paul, bless your name. That comma gave Martha an eschatological hope that invaded and overruled her existential pain. Bless your name. No matter what you're going through, Jesus brings the resurrection into the present. So even though the day is evil, your resurrection faith operates all year long. Bless your name. So Jesus goes to the grave. And Jesus says, pause. Yes, show me where you laid him. Yes, sir. Went there to the tomb and saw the stone that had been rolled up to the door. The stone was rolled up so Lazarus would never come out again. How many of you know that the enemy has tried to roll a stone up against your situation to make sure you'll never laugh again, never smile again, never have another good day, never be blessed again. But Jesus... Jesus... Yes, Jesus looks over the crowd and says, roll, roll the stone away. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, he's still rolling away stones. He's still unlocking doors. He's still making a way. He's still lifting burdens. He's still healing bodies. He's still lifting us up. 